Hello, hello, everyone. So, a while back, I created an app. In fact, it was my very first Pew app that I got up and running. Uh, and it was really exciting for me. I didn't, I wasn't using Quasar at the time. I don't think I even knew about Quasar at the time. And I called it buildmyday.com. I don't think I even own that domain anymore. Um, in hindsight, probably wasn't the best um, domain. But the, the reason that I built it was basically that my morning routine was all set. I had an app for that on my phone that would kind of help me get my morning routine in check. Uh, and I could also use a similar app for my nighttime routine, but I found it really difficult to get my day organized. And so I came up with this idea of basically having like um, set amounts of time to uh, different types of tasks that I was going to do throughout the day. So I'm going to quickly map out what it looked like to give you an idea. So you had this panel on the left and actually let's just do like a, a frame here. Yeah, that's probably a better way to do it. Where's my frame? Okay, I'll give that a white background. Oh, my dog's going off. Is someone outside? Oh, they're just barking at someone down there. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so on the, on the left here, you could basically choose um, your different tasks. So I guess I would have had a pane at the top here where you could then like create tasks. And you might have like a plus button, for example, for creating a type of task. And then you'd say like how long the task goes for and stuff like that. And maybe I could even have a search in here, actually. That would be really cool. So you can search for the different tasks that you can do. All right, so let's do that. And I don't know if I like playing around with this later on. But then another thing that I had was the tasks themselves. And these were shaped like tomatoes because the idea is it was basically mimicking the Pomodoro technique. It was kind of like um, the reason I built it was because I wanted something like the Pomodoro technique, but a little bit more flexible. And so I had basically all of these tomatoes down here with the different tasks. Uh, and then of course you could like add them and delete them. So I'll probably add that in as well. Let's find an icon for those. Maybe like delete. Yeah, that'll do. So they all had like delete buttons and let's do like a pencil to denote an edit button. Yeah, stuff like that. Maybe just like a black one like this. And yeah, so that's probably about it. Just editing and deleting them. And I thought it was really cool. I used it quite a bit. I even created this friends feature so you could hear when somebody else started their Pomodoros. Um, and that would kind of motivate you to work because you knew that they were working as well. So anyway, that was the left pane. And then over here, I had another section. And this is where you basically set up your day. So you would take these Pomodoros and you would drag them over to this side here. And then they'd show up as kind of like smaller versions of the icon. All right, so these all had their own individual colors. And then you might, for example, drag a few of them down here like this. And you basically just set up your day like that. And say, okay, I'm gonna do such and such tasks. And you plan your day. And then when all of that was done, I think I even had like, um, yeah, I, ha I had this feature as well where you could basically have a routine so you could automatically drag them all in. Anyway, you get the idea. So then you would drag them in here, you'd set up your categories, drag them in here so they're ready for your day. And then the next thing I wanna do is have the actual thing itself, the category itself counting down. So this is basically the thing that you're currently working on. And then I imagine you'd probably have like a start button or maybe you just click on it to start. I don't know, let's go with a start button so that the UI is a bit clearer. So say for example, start. And then I guess we could also have a pause button. So it's kind of like toggle, but I liked my way of doing it a little bit better. I used toggle a little bit and it was kind of cool, but I kind of like, um, I kind of always remembered my version of this app fondly and thought that it felt a little bit nicer. So I thought, hey, let's use some of the stuff that I've built lately to see if I can basically rebuild uh, this concept again. So now that we've kind of like mapped it out, I'm gonna start up a new Quasar project and map everything out into Superbase and just kind of do it. 
Actually, that's the next thing I'll do. Let's say, what is a Pomodoro going to need? We'll call it a Pomodoro. And then each Pomodoro is going to have a title. It's going to have a color. It's going to have, what else would a Pomodoro have? Um, oh, time. Seconds. And we might even just call this Pomodoro. So this will be the Pomodoro categories table. Okay, so this is kind of the first part here where you set up your categories. Then you've got the Pomodoro itself. So we call this Pomodoro. And then it's going to have seconds complete. And then it has a Pomodoro, Pomodoro category ID. Okay, so that's kind of how these two are linked together. I guess you could kind of like, I don't know. I always just draw arrows all over the place. They don't actually become that handy in the end. And then over here, as this is ticking off, basically it changes the seconds complete. So I don't really need that. I can basically just point this to this here. And what I did is I basically did a polling type thing where I said, um, every five, maybe 10 seconds, just update that seconds complete. Um, and when the seconds complete is equal to or greater than the seconds, then you can mark this as completed. So maybe you can even add in here, completed. There we go. Maybe a description. This could be a good idea too. And so it looks like the database is going to be pretty straightforward for this. Of course, you've got a user as well, but they log in. Um, I think with the Superbase setup I have, you also have a user ID on each individual field. I don't usually do things this way, but I think it's the way it's done with Superbase, where you just basically say, this is the user ID. Um, and I think I created some code in one of my composables that in the background looks for that and then automatically sends it through. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, all right, so let's put that down there. Toogle. <laughs> um, start, I guess you call this stop. All right, so I'm just trying to think, is there anything else? It really is that simple. It's a super, super simple database setup. And then you'd have like sound effects, of course, like when it's done and some cool stuff like that. But anywho, um, maybe I could even look into using push notifications. I don't know if Superbase has that. Superbase push notifications. Uh, and when there is a change in your data, Using this, you can notify external servers like Fiber. Yeah, okay, so you kind of hook it up with another service like Pusher or something like that. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and start building this. I'm going to just use this project again because you can only have up to two projects. And let's go into the database and let's build the database up first. Actually, we might as well get the project up and running to begin with. So let's say Quasar create and we'll call this. Um, how about build dash my dash day? Because that's what I used to call it. So we'll stick with that for now. And while that's going, actually, that starter kit won't take long to download. So we just give this a couple more seconds. There we go. Build my day. Build my day. Build my day. Look at quasarcast.com. And then we'll just put in all of these settings here. We will use Vuex, maybe no to TypeScript, but I do want to start using it in my new projects now that I'm becoming familiar with TypeScript. Um, Axios, we won't actually need that either because we're using Superbase, so that'll do. Pretty Art, no, but I like using Standard. Yes to Yarn, and we'll give that a moment to install. Now I can come in here and delete this table. Uh, delete, I might actually just copy that. No, I don't need to copy that ID right now. Delete that table. And then we'll create these two tables here, which are Pomodoro categories and Pomodoros. So let's say Pomodoro categories. Whoops. 
Uh, I don't need a description, I don't think. And we've got a title, description, color, seconds, user ID. Actually, why don't we just whack that over there, whack this over here, so I can easily put all that in. Um, so we'll start with the title. And of course, that's going to be, um, where is it? I think just a var car for this. Probably don't need var char, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we also want a description. And honestly, a var char will probably do for that as well, but we'll use um, text just to make sure it's fully covered. And we'll introduce a color. By the way, one thing I don't know how to do is to set a default value to an empty string. So if anybody knows how to do that, um, you, uh, that doesn't work because that literally interprets that as two um, colons. So let me know if you know how to set this to an empty string by default. Uh, yeah, so I can't, I, I've never figured out a way to do that. Anyway, we got color. And I guess I'll just set that to text. Let's keep it really simple. Oh, sorry, Vaka. And seconds, that's just going to be an integer. Oops. I don't think this um, likes the display being done in this fashion. Yeah, let's just go full screen here. It's going to spaz it out a little bit. Now, what? Mm, okay, I need to think about this. Can you do unsigned integers? I don't know that you can. There might be a way to do it. Yeah, we're gonna do eight byte just in case. Um, we just in case we need that extra space, and then of course the user ID. And for the user ID, we're going to connect that to the user. Users, and specifically, uh, is it the instance ID or the, or the ID? I think it's just the ID, it's what I usually do. And that should be it. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And the next thing I'm going to do is Pomodoro's. And it's going to have the category, seconds completed, completed, and user ID. I'm not going to remember that. Let's start with the category. Oh, actually, we can probably come back in here now. Yeah. CD into build my day. I'm going to add a whole bunch of app extensions now so that I can stream my, streamline my process. Quasar extension, add. And the first one, of course, is viewer slash force. So we'll give that a second to run. And now we can go ahead and add another table here. New table. And we'll call this Pomodoro's. And we come in here. It's got a Pomodoro category ID, which is how it knows what category it is. And then we can come in here. Oh no, you click on this button here. And then you can say that it's for Pomodoro categories. ID. That's what I love about Superbase. You really are just dealing with an SQL database at the end of the day. I feel a lot safer with that and it makes me feel like I've got a lot more flexibility for the future. All right, so seconds completed. Seconds completed. And we'll come in here and we'll say in eight for that. And we'll add another here, another one here called completed. And we'll make that a Boolean. And the last, oh, can we set that to false by default? Yeah, default value, false. And I do not want that to be nullable. And then the user ID. So now user ID, and we'll connect that to the user's ID. User's ID. All right, save it. Go ahead and create that table. Let's come back here. We're going to be using Superbase. Give that a second to install. Uh, so what's next? Next, I want to install the VueXORM app extension and then basically model all of that data. So let's now say Quasar extension add VueX-ORM. 
this will make it easy for me to model that data. And then after I've done that, I'm also going to add the Superbase um, model app extension, which makes it really easy to sort of marry view and Superbase together. So let's say Quasar extension add app view model slash Superbase. Man, there's so much about this that I wanted to talk about in my talk that I just didn't have time to cover. Um, this app extension, it's early days, but it can do some pretty insane stuff. And it's not just an app extension. App extension just wraps what it is under the hood, which is just kind of um, marrying uh, view to Superbase. But anyway, uh, we should be able to open that in code now. So now I can come here and close this down. Uh, I might zoom in a little bit just so you all can see. And there's a few things that I like to do. In fact, anybody watching this who uses Quasar, um, you might want to pay attention to this part. Oh, what is this bracket thing? I never installed that. Oh my goodness, get rid of it. I hate it. Oh, this colored bracket thing. Um, bracket. Maybe VS Code installs it by default now or something. Oh my goodness, it's horrendous, isn't it? What's it good? Uh, I want to see my installed app extensions. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I hope I can get rid of this. It's terrible. I know some people like it because it helps them keep their place, but honestly, just I just don't really have that problem when I code. I have many other problems, but that's not one of them. Oh, sorry, I know this is kind of boring, but I would really like to get rid of it. No, it's not there. I don't know where this is coming from. All right, let's jump out of this, jump back into code and just hope that that was something weird that happened. Otherwise, okay, it's not, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Oh man, I hate it so much. So ugly. Uh, no. Wait, we've now got this. Ex what's this? This is new. We now get this um dot vs code. So maybe I could just go ahead and delete that file or that entire folder. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send this to the Quasar team and be like, please, no, you've got to be kidding me. It's disgusting. At least in my opinion. And I think bracket pairs. Guys. Yeah, okay, there we go. It's gone now. Oh, All right, well, some people like it. Okay, sorry, uh, let's go back to the main thing. ESLint, um, I'm pretty sure they still put it on a lower version. And ESLint plugin view in particular, I believe now is on 8. And you get a few benefits with scripts set up with that, so I do actually like to install that. Um, ESLint plugin view. Um, and we'll look at the releases because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here we go. We've got 8.4.0. So let's come in here and see if we can get that working. Doing this project is just a good way to sort of keep me up to date as well with like all these little changes. So we'll run a yarn on that so that we get that um, installed. Hopefully that's all I have to do. Now, the other thing I always do is I get rid of View 3 Essentials and I bring in View 3 Recommended. It gives me much, much nicer linting. I don't know what that's all about. Hopefully it's not gonna run into any problems. Um, and the other thing I do is, refresh these docs. There's a section here that talks about um, making it so that define props and stuff like that works. Here we go, user guide, define prop. Yeah, here it is here. In ENV, we just need to set that on. ENV, where is it? There we go. That makes a big difference to the developer experience. 
Okay, so that's done. We should be now able to basically just restart ESLint. Restart the ESLint server. And let's see if I can now jump into one of these files. Now, I know one that always errors out is the error 404. So let's see this. Yeah, notice that that's linting for us now. And if I save it, it should make everything look nice. There we go. Another thing I do is I come in here and then remove that entirely. Uh, none of it's actually needed because this is the name of the component, error 404. It actually names it automatically for you using the file name. So we can just go ahead and get rid of that. Save it. And it also doesn't like that error 404 isn't multi-page. Um, sorry, isn't um, more than one word because it treats that number with the error in it um, as one word. And in order to keep it HTML semantic, we need to change it to error, something like error page 404. So that's what the, that's what that's all about. These are a couple of things that I like to fix up. Um, and then we should be good to go. Cool. All right. So next, I'm going to jump into my config directory here and then Superbase. And now we can jump into Superbase, Settings, API. We'll grab this key here, paste it in there. This is the fun part. I get to basically set everything up in seconds. And then the URL, paste that in there. And now we'll run uh, Quasar Dev. And hopefully all those app extensions just installed and worked correctly. There's a couple other things, actually, now that I think about it, for installing them. Um, in the store, I now need to jump into index. We'll come here and we'll say plugins. Um, I know what all of this does, so I really don't... I really don't need any of that there. Module example, we can go ahead and delete that. I don't need it. Enable strict mode adds overhead. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I understand what's going on there. And I can get rid of that. Simplify this a bit. And the pl the plugin we'll use is Quasar Vuex RM plugin. Basically, this does some Webpack magic behind the scenes, and it means that everything in this model's directory is automatically going to be used with Vuex RM, which is really cool. So notice here we've got this sort of user one that the app extension gave us by default that has an ID and an email. So if I open if I open up my browser now, jump into view, jump into the store, there we go. It's, it's sitting right there under users. So it's automatically being registered for us. Uh, and now to add a new model, I believe I can just say Quasar extension Vuex dash ORM. Oh no, it's run Vuex dash ORM. Uh, model new, I think, and let's call it uh, Pomodoro category. All right, I've done something wrong there. Maybe it's new model. I got these the wrong way around. No, nope. all right, so I'm doing something wrong here. Let's create some more space. Quasar extension. Maybe it's just Quasar run. Yeah, okay, there we go. It's Quasar run. Uh, all right, so we've got this Pomodoro category, and the other one we had was just Pomodoro. And then basically we can model all of our data. About a full screen there. That we have inside of our table. Let's just grab this, whack it in there. And here we go, we've got the Pomodoro. And it's got an ID. Everything's going to have an ID. ID, Pomodoro, category, ID, this dot adder. And I usually just set all of these um, to null. Uh, I might set it to a number. I, I never did this in the past for some reason. I'm going to do it again and see if I can remember why <laughs> I did that. Oh, actually, I should probably mimic what we're doing in the database. So that's always going to be a number. Seconds completed. I believe that's nullable. So let's say seconds completed. This dot add R, we'll set that to null. 
on my OneNote of Bold there. Whether or not it's completed, this is going to be a Boolean, and I guess by default that would be false. And then also user ID, then I can say this dot number. That's going to be required too. And now we can do the relationship. So we can say user, uh, well, we won't really need that relationship. We'll say Pomodoro, whoop, Doro category, this dot belongs to, and then we can basically just import Pomodoro category. All right, so this belongs to Pomodoro category via Pomodoro category ID. Okay, so that relationship has now been set up. Now we want to do the same thing for Pomodoro category. And by the way, this should have a has many relationship. So we need to think about that as well. So we're coming in, we'll say the title. Did I just delete that? I did, didn't I? Is equal to this dot, and I believe by default that is also null. Uh, the next one is description. Um, color, and we've got seconds, which is going to be that's also nullable, and then user ID, and we'll say there this dot number, which is going to need a value. All right, so that's the Pomodoro category, and that's actually pretty much it. Now let's see if all of this like login stuff that I set up before actually works. So close that, close that, close that, close that. And now this is the home page. So let's see if we can go to the login. And there we go, We've got our login page. First, I want to just change this home page quickly and change a couple of details here. So stuff that I often do for a new project. Um, router mode, I always change it from hash to history. It means rather than having this hash, we end up without the hash and it just shows um, the actual URL. The reason they do this is because it's a little bit full, more foolproof full for deployment. You need to do a couple of more advanced things sometimes when you're deploying, but if you're using something like Netlify, it handles all that for you, um, I believe. So we're just gonna change that to history mode, save it. That'll take the server a second to restart. Uh, anything else in here? Not that I can think of for now. But notice that we can basically get rid of that hash and it brings us back to the same thing. So let's now go into index.view, which is basically this home page here. And we'll get rid of that image and we'll just say Q dash button. I'm going to make it really ugly to begin with. Please forgive me. Login. And that's just going to send us straight to the login page. So that's just going to say to slash login. Let's keep it nice and simple. There we go. A login button and a register button. At the very least, this gives you a little bit of an idea of how you can make all of this work. So we'll say class is equal to Q. Whoop. Ah, what have I done? Q dash margin or mm, say small. Yeah, there we go. And then we might just say this is primary and we might actually switch those two around. There we go. Uh, all of this is redundant. Don't need it. In fact, this entire layout, I don't need. What's going on here? Oh, this should be multi-work. So let's rename this to index page. VS Code is going to be nice and help me fix up some of the differences there. What's it crying about? Ah, uh, so I think it's under routes now. We need to make sure that index page is what it's being called as well. Index page. Just have to shut down the server and start it again. Yeah, I don't think it picked up on that. It looks like the linter didn't pick up on that change. So we'll start that server again. And now let's just check if they work. Well, they're not going to work because I'm restarting the server. Uh, the other thing I'll do is I'll jump into the main layout. 
And I'm just going to like call a bunch of stuff here that we don't need. So we're not going to need that burger bar. This is being treated more as a home page. Why isn't backspace working? Oh, there we go. So we'll get rid of that. Nice. We don't need the draw. So let's go ahead and remove that. And I don't think I'm actually going to need any of this stuff here inside of script. So we can remove the script entirely. Just bring us to a much simpler example. I don't need the Quasar version showing there either. And there we go. Super basic. Login takes us to the login page. Register takes us to the register page. Uh, all right, I should still have that account from before. So let's say Luke at quasarcast.com. Network request fails. All right, so I might not have lined something up correctly. Network. See what's going on here. Okay, so let's didn't put the credentials in right. Thought I did. Config superbase. Didn't I paste them in there? Oh, there's something wrong with the app extension where I'm getting a config inside of the source directory. Um, okay, I don't know which app extension did that though, because there's two app extensions that could have done that. So let's you know what, let's do this. We'll delete that. Uh, ooh, this is the one that's already got all the data in it. We'll get rid of the word copy there. We'll come down here and we'll delete that config directory. And we should be good to go now. Boom. All right, so we've got a place where we can basically just start building now. So that's kind of cool. We're able to get up and running with authentication pretty quickly. And I talked about this in my talk, but um, it's cool to note that if we come up here, we've already got logout, changing password, all of that set up for us. Um, and it's all configurable by just jumping into this auth directory here. Um, so you can just say auth, components, like this account menu. Maybe you want to go in there and say, um, I don't know. Let's look at the account menu it's, itself. Um, Class is equal to background dash gray two, something like that. Maybe you want to give it like a slight gray background and you can do that. <laughs> that was a silly example, but the point is you can just come in here and edit this to your heart's content. So uh, everything's working in terms of authentication. Now let's just have a play around and see if we can insert some data into the back end. And with that Superbase app extension I installed, that should be pretty easy to do. So let's go to that dashboard, user dashboard, and I'm going to do most of my stuff in here for now. Let's say um, q-form, we're just going to have a play here, q-input, and we want to accept all the data that we need for our Pomodoro categories, because that'll be the first thing that we need to build. And that's going to mean, you know what, I've already got it all here. Let's go full screen, Pomodoro category, we want a title, description, and then we'll have a color picker. So let's say here, label is equal to title. That could be self-closing. And we'll say V dash model is equal to um, form dot label. So we're going to need that form here. So we can now say use model, which I should be able to pull out of that super base thing. So let's say, user model and that's coming from at um, view model slash super base so now i can come in here and i can say i want i want to pluck out of super base use model and we're going to be using pomodoro category there so basically i'm passing oh my phone's gone off basically i'm going to be passing um this class through to use model and that allows us to do some really cool stuff. I think you're going to love this. So if we say form here. Hey Luke, morning from Bolivia. Ha! Huh, cool. That's amazing. Good morning. It's 8.42 p.m. over here. Um, I'll be moving to America in um, about six months time though. So my time zones are going to be a lot kinder to me <laughs> in the future. So that's automatically going to create a form for us. This is really cool. It basically ignores the ID, right? It, and it ignores, um, 
think it ignores user ID. I can't even remember. But anyway, basically, it's going to automatically create a form with all of these fields for us. So we don't have to scaffold it out ourselves. And it does a whole bunch of other cool stuff as well, which you'll, you'll see in a second. So we have form.title. I don't know why I had label there. We're also going to have description and color. So let's do description and color. Description. And we'll set this type equal to text area. And this is going to be a q-color input. And we'll say color there. We probably don't actually need a label. Perhaps let's whack that over there. So this is the beginnings of our form. Let's put it inside of a card so it's a little bit easier to see. Q-card. And we'll throw all of this in a section. Q-card-section. Save that. Hello from Chile, South America. Ha! Very cool. And now I want to add a bit of margining down here. Class is equal to Q-margin bottom, maybe medium. Yep, that'll do. I hate this style with the whole underline thing. Sometimes it makes sense in longer forms, but a lot of the time I just don't like it. So I'm going to come here and say, let's use the outline style for something different. Or is it outlined with a D? Yep, it's outlined with a D. There we go. Title, description. We can come in here and choose the color. And I want to make sure that that ends up with a hex value. I don't know how to do that. So let me show you how to use the Quasar docs like a pro. You just come up here. This is how I do it, at least. Um, API Explorer. I'm going to look for Q color. There's the Q color component. And now I've got everything about Q color available to me. And if I need to dig deeper, I could just click on this docs button. If you know how to read the Quasar docs, like you understand the difference between props, events, slots, and all that kind of stuff, it is so ridiculously easy. You just jump onto this page and it is a piece of cake. Uh, all right, so we probably want to look at model, format model, forces a certain model format. And we want to use hex. I think I want to, yeah, force hex there. So let's say format model and we'll set that equal to hex. And there we go. I successfully used the Quasar docs. That's what it looks like. Uh, so we'll come in here and we'll say format model is equal to. And do I get auto completion here? No, I think we're going to in the future though. Because um, some members of the Quasar team. Yusuf, I think in particular, has done some amazing stuff with TypeScript that's going to allow us to get some super awesome auto completion. It might actually already exist and I just don't know how to do it right. Or maybe I need to be using TypeScript. Uh, anyway, let's come up here and well, let's see if it's modeling correctly. So I'm just going to like smack that down here inside of a pre tag, our form. And there we go. See how it's created the form for us? Isn't that amazing? Um, my category description and then we can come in here and select the color my god quasar makes this stuff ridiculously simple i love it uh okay and then we've got seconds now seconds i want to have a special seconds input for that don't i hmm Maybe for now we just directly input the second so I can just test this and get it all working. So now you can say Q dash input and we'll say V dash model is equal to form dot seconds. Make sure I spell that correctly. And we'll say the label is equal to seconds. Save it. And there we go. Same as before. I'm going to say outlined here for the seconds. And then we'll just add a margin under here. Class is equal to uh, Q dash margin bottom medium and there we go and i'll just make sure this is a number by saying that the type is equal to number there cool all right i don't think we need this pre-tag anymore let's just check that works and it does so we'll get rid of that and now this is really really simple we can just add a q dash button this is going to blow your mind for those of you that are currently watching this um if you didn't see my talk i think this might blow your mind Label is equal to create. And then we can say at click is equal to create. Now this, um, oh, so there's a function. Uh, have we got everything now? Color, seconds, yeah. 
So this use model that I'm pulling out of Superbase, um, at view model Superbase, it basically gives us all the functionality we need for creating, updating, deleting, but also keeping all of that in sync with the store as well. So if I come in here and I pull out create, and we'll also pull out creating. So now I can say here, loading is equal to creating, save that. And we'll add a margin here, class is equal to Q dash margin bottom medium. And let's make this, sorry, I get carried away with the styling. Primary color, and we'll say full width, I reckon. And I reckon this will look better if it's flat. No, maybe not flat, unelevated. The difference is unelevated keeps the color, flat inverts the color. So if I say that, yeah, I think that looks a bit better. Um, yeah, so this use model means all I have to do is call create, and it's going to give me this creating spinner. But then we can also even say error, for example. Um, error. And I think we've got, do we have has errors? No, that's all right. So now I can come in here and say, by the way, Q dash banner, let's give it a background dash red and just say error there to test if that's working. Um, this isn't being used yet. I'll use it in a second. Yeah, cool. Maybe red dash nine and then we'll say text dash white, something like that. Maybe eight. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then we'll have a Q dash margin bottom of medium. And I want to round off these edges. Rounded. Yeah. All right. So let's come in now. And what I can do is I can say V dash if we have an error. So if something went wrong, then I want you to show this banner here with the error. How easy is that? Because our error has just been pulled directly out of here. So use model is going to handle all the errors. It's going to give us a create function. It's going to give us a creating spinner and it generates the form for us. And all we do is call create. And it basically takes everything inside of the form and um, creates it for us and handles that sort of um, play between the front end and super base. So we just pull out the functionality we need and we just whack it straight into our template. So let's give this a try now and see how it goes. It could crash and burn, or it might be a uber success. Um, my category, category one, and let's give it a nice kind of purpley color. Seconds, I don't know, 120 seconds. Create, we get the spinner. Did you notice that spinner for a second there? Let's go to super base and see if we got that data in. I didn't see any errors. So I'm gonna guess that probably did work. And there we go. How? cool is that look at the code that we actually use to create this let me close that oh another thing i start doing now is i go to quasar.conf.js and i'll search for open and change that to false i hate it when starting the server automatically opens it up in a new tab because i'm constantly stopping and starting it when i do like funky stuff with my webpack config and stuff like that so i always set that to false and then i just when this is done i just control click the server so I just control click that so I can easily open it anyway. Um, pet hate of mine. So that was worth changing. But yeah, there we go. Now we can easily insert that into the database. Um, right. So yeah, it was literally that simple. And this gives us a whole bunch of other functionality. And I'll show you it here. You can also find a specific model. Um, you can also, you know, check if it's finding. So stuff like that. Um, check if it's loading in general. So if it's creating, updating, deleting, whatever, that's going to make sure that's going to show the spinner. Um, you can reset the form. So when I've in entered something here, maybe I want to have like a clear button that resets the entire form. And I'll just give you an example of that because it's, it's so, so stupid, simple to do. You can just say reset form, pluck that out of there. And I can just come up here. And let's just create a test button here. At click is equal to, whoops, reset form. We're just going to call that. And we'll set the label equal to reset. What have I done wrong? Nope, oh, I left the dot in there. 
So now I type something in there, for example, we could just reset the form. All this functionality is just sitting there ready for you to pluck out and use. Um, I love it. Anyway, I digress. I get a little bit of, um, excited about this stuff. So next thing we're going to do, I think, is jump into components and let's create a new component for this form. So let's create a new file. And we'll call this uh, create um, Pomodoro category form. Since we already wrote all that code, we might as well just tuck it away somewhere. And I'm just going to create a template. I've got a little snippet for that. Grab this entire template and then whack it in there and make some changes. We don't need the page. We don't need the card. We don't need that reset button anymore. We just want the form. And this is something I try to do all the time when I code. Since under the hood, my root component is a form component, I like to use the word form at the end of the name of my file because then I always know exactly what it is. Even if sometimes it might not quite make sense when you read it, uh, if, it, if it's a list, for example, that is the root component here. If it's a quasar list, then I'll make that list. If it's a button, then I'll make that last word button. That's kind of something, a little general rule that I follow that makes it easier for me to know what's going on in my code. Uh, all right, so we've got this create Pomodoro category form. Might as well just duplicate that. Um, oh, no, because we don't need a form for the other one. All right, so let's start doing some layout type stuff now. And I'll do that by, let's come back here, let's just steal this code, steal the script stuff, and we'll just whack it in there. So we don't need any of that anymore. And I'm gonna start now focusing on basically just making this look nice. Okay, so first of all, we wanna change this to a row, I think. So let's say row. And then I'm just going to play around with divs here to get the layout that I think works the best. And this is kind of a trick that I do. Background dash blue or whatever. And then we can say, for example, column, medium. And we'll set that to something like, I don't know, four. We'll start with large actually to begin with. Column, large, four. I'm going to throw this in my bottom screen. And I've got my stream set up so that it shows the screen where my mouse is. So... I can easily just go to the bottom screen to show you the updates there. So we've got four, and we'll make this one green. These colors are going to be ugly, but it won't matter. Uh, four times four, uh, four plus four plus four is 12, so that'll work in our grid. And I think that's it. So let's say one, two, three, like that. And notice down here, that's now displaying nicely for us. And this one, I'll say something like orange. There we go. Now, I want. I think I want to make these a bit smaller. I want to make that a three, a three, uh, and then that one a six. Yeah, this is going to be the Pomodoro itself. Uh, better still, maybe I'll make that a four, and then that a, uh, a seven. Oh, I did my math wrong. What did I do? So make that a four, I have to subtract one from that, gosh, Luke. There we go. So this is gonna be where you choose your category, and then this is where you add your categories to your list of things you wanna do for the day, and then this is basically the current thing that you're working on at the time. All right, uh, next, how about we turn this into a car? Um, so we'll come up here and we'll say q-card, better still, I might just throw the card directly inside of there. I like to have that extra kind of wrapping, um, makes it easier to work with. And now we can have a toolbar, q-toolbar, I guess. And then we could say here, q-toolbar-title. And this is the category. Let's just try that and see how it works out. Yeah, so that's our category. Can I go full height here? I'm not, not actually sure that'll work. Oh yeah, it did work. Tremendous. Okay, so next I can do something like this. Q dash marginal medium. All right, so that these are going to be a little bit more separate. And I might actually make that small. Yeah, so there we go. That's where you choose our category. And we might give that a different color.
color and I might align that to the left as well. So let's get rid of this text center because that's making that centered, which I don't really want. And then we'll have a button in here, Q dash button. And this will have an icon equal to MDI dash plus. I want to use the MDI icon library. I really like it. So let's go to quasar.conf and where it says icon, uh, where is it? MDI version five is what I want to use there. The reason I get this squiggly is because of this um, icon plugin I use, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't break anything. All right, so here's, so we've got a button here. Icon is set. So why is that not working? Oh, I didn't save the file. And there we go. Now we've got the MDI icon library. Um, next, I want to style that a little bit. How about we say, uh, we make it flat. No, 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 unelevated. And we'll set the color equal to primary. And I'll change my colors in a moment, I think, just so things look fresh and they don't have that. Otherwise, everything ends up with that default um, Quasar vibe, which is great, but you kind of get over it when you've made a bazillion Quasar projects before. By the way, we've been doing this for 50 minutes. And look how far we've come. We can already, like, we've already got full authentication. We can already um, basically create a category um, with Superbase. Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, so I want to make this dense, I think. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. This is where you can add your categories. Um, maybe I could add a shadow here as well. Will that look good? Class is equal to shadow dash maybe three. Um, that's not working. You know what? I'm changing my mind anyway. I think I'm rather just give this a color of maybe a primary color. It's not doing anything. Okay, you probably just use a class for that. Background dash primary. Yeah. Cool. And I tried shadow did before, didn't I? And it didn't work. Yeah, it's not working. Probably something I'm doing wrong. Now let's change the text to white there. And think that's about it. So that's going to be our category section. And of course, it'll look better when I get rid of these stupid backgrounds, but um, they're there to help us style for now. But it's kind of a good starting point. So if we come back to our design here. We also had a search bar in there to search our categories. How's that going to work when I got the word category? Hmm, might just have to put it below. Um, and then I might call this like today's tasks or something like that. Yeah, so let's try this. Let's I put it just right next to it. Q dash input. Um, we're, I'm going to make it outlines. V dash model is equal to search. And we'll just have like a search um, thingy for now. I like having the script tag at the top now. And we'll say const search is equal to a ref, which is an empty string by default. Import ref from view. And the other thing I want to do is give it, because if you look at that now, it just doesn't quite look right. Um, I think I want that to be inside of the title, actually. Input, let's put it in there. And let's change its color equal to white. Yeah, okay, putting in there, it's kind of messed things up. Let's put it back there. Oh, actually, what do I like more, that side or that side? Hmm. I don't know. Um, but we'll have to change, I think, maybe the background. How do I change that? Um, class is equal to maybe background dash white. Yeah, just to kind of like fill that in. Uh, and then we want to make it dense, I think, just so it fits in a bit nicer. We'll give it an icon equal to MDI dash search, I think it's called. 
No, and you can't say icon there actually. That's the old quasar. You now need to come in here. And this is a better way of doing it. And say template. And then this is append. And we'll just add a q dash icon in there. And we'll give it a name equal to mdi dash magnify. I don't even know what that icon's called. I'll find out in a second. Oh no, there we go. It's showing up there. So that should be correct. Uh, let's get rid of this color. Um, or this background color. It's messing with my styles. No, not a pen, a pen, singular. There we go. Okay, I think that kind of looks good. Uh, let's change the icon color as well. Color is equal to white. Um, I want to make the background... A di what do I want to do here? I think I do want the background to be white. But only the background of the input. So let's go to the Quasar docs. I'm pretty sure there's a way I can just make the background of the input a certain color. Actually, no, let's go to the API Explorer, Q input. Uh, it will be under styling, color. Here we go, BG dash color. So that is available to us. So I can come in here and say BG color is white. There we go. So now we'll make this something like gray dash, I don't know, just gray. Let's go with that. That looks good. I think I want this to be before. So prepend. There we go. That looks really good to me. Um, it's looking it's like it's too close to that button. So we'll come down here and we'll just say class is equal to um, margin left and let's say medium. And I think that looks pretty good now. Yeah, anyway. That's good enough for now. I've probably spent a little too long on this styling type stuff. That's working really nicely. So let's come up here and get rid of that background blue so we can see what it looks like. And that's kind of like what it'll look like in the in the final result. Very nice. Um, now, since I'm already doing my own kind of padding thing, let's get rid of padding here on the page. That's gonna make things look a little bit more uniform with the padding. Yeah, there we go. And I might add a little bit more padding to all of these now instead of this margin small. Um, let's make that maybe margin medium. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next thing, which is like these little, um, what would you call them? I guess like the Pomodoro cards that will sit inside of there for all of our categories. And then we can make it so that clicking on here is going to actually create those categories. So this would be fun. I might even just switch that over there. It might be easier for you to see as the viewer. It's gonna mess with my stylings for now, but that's totally fine. Let's make it easier for you. And so now I wanna come in here and add cards for all of, all of those. Let's say that's the toolbar. We might add a div in here just so we've got some like wrap ability. Class is equal to row so this is going to be a row here and then we're going to have basically a whole bunch of columns so we'll say class is equal to a column and we won't do any sizing here let's just say six and i want to say v-4 is equal to item in just as an example and i'll do an array um it's kind of like a quick and dirty way of spitting out some data. And then I can just say key is equal to the item. All right. And I'll put a comment in there. Whoops. What did I do? Put a comment in there just so it formats for us. And we'll just say test just to see that is spitting out. All right, cool. Now we can start adding cards. Q dash card. And I don't like the default shadows. Bom da Brazil. What does that mean? Does that mean like woohoo Brazil or hooray for Brazil? Give me a translation. Uh, so now I, I can say here shadow dash two, for example, just to sort of um, create a shadow that isn't too heavy there. And then we'll say here q dash card dash section. And then this will hold 
I don't know, some sort of content. Maybe I can have like a minimum height here. I think I want to keep it four. You know what? Let's keep it. Oh, here we go. That worked well. Let's keep it um, uniform by adding a ratio in there. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Hue, margin, or medium. That's too much. Let's make it small. All right. I think that looks good. If I come in here, check this out. Quasar's got this really cool Q ratio. No, that's not what it's called. Um, I have to actually look for this one. It allows you to basically maintain a ratio in a component, and it's awesome if you want to have like a square, for example. Responsive, that might be it. Yeah, here we go. Responsive, and then you just give it the ratio, like one, for example. Check this out. So in this example here, if I want them to be squares, I could, well, I think I can, we'll find out in a moment here, wrap this in a Q responsive, Q dash responsive, and then just say ratio is equal to one. How cool is that? <laughs> I love it. Uh, now, what I might do is take this marginal and put it on there. I don't know if this will work. Let's see if it does. Yeah, there we go. And it, yeah, basically we've just got like a bunch of cards now. Let's see if we can put this inside of a scroll area as well. I think that would look really cool. Uh, I think if there's like a Q scroll area component. Q scroll area. And there we go. Let's just do that and see what happens. It might crash and burn or it might work really well. Uh, and that's going to be this entire row. So I think I just want to grab that. Q dash scroll dash area. Let's see what that does. That completely messes everything up. Uh, maybe we give it like a full height. I don't know. Let's just get rid of it and see what happens. Yeah, no. Um... Maybe we wrap, what happens if I wrap this whole thing? Q no, that probably won't work. I'll try it anyway. Scroll dash area. I might actually ditch this for now. Because it's not that big a deal. Hang on. Let's actually read the docs properly. So we go to the docs for Q scroll area, find what we're looking for. That's a nice looking scroll area. To see some more examples of the following. Hang on, I think there's a CSS class for this. Scroll. And there's like a utility class for scrolling which makes it really easy to do this kind of thing. So, maybe like like overflow. Really, that's what we want to do. We want to say like an overflow here. See, this is why I use Quasar, because I bloody hate dealing with um, CSS. So let's come in here and just have a little play. And I'll jump into the row, and I think if I set here an overflow, uh, maybe auto, but then we'll have to set a max height. You know what? That'd be the problem. I need to have a max height on this uh, on this div. So rather than going full height, we want to say max height. Or we can keep that on full height. And I'm going to add a style tag in here. I want to say max height is equal to a calculation of 100 view height so basically look at the viewport and say 100 and then subtract i don't know let's try 120 pixels to begin with see what that does there we go we've got a we've got a nice max height there and you can see that by the bottom that's shown there um let's make that number a bit smaller maybe 100 so that it extends out uh let's try 80. yeah you can see the bottom is kind of um re it's reaching for the bottom there and now we should be able to say, I think there's a class called overflow-hidden. Yeah, 
And let's just change that to overflow auto. And now I can scroll up and down in there. But this isn't sticking anymore. So really we want that max height to actually sit uh, inside of this div here. So let's come in here and we'll say, we'll grab all those classes. We do want to keep that full height. So we'll just grab those classes. No, we want that margin as well. Okay, so it's just the style and the overflow hidden that we want. So let's get rid of that, pluck that out. And then here, I'll whack those I will say overflow hidden in there. And now we're going to give that a max height. Let's see if that works. It did not. Oh, this needs to be maybe something like 140 now. Um, 180. Oh, okay. A lot more than that, apparently. Let's just try 220. Yeah, it's doing something weird here. Overflow auto. All right, here we go. And so now basically, we probably we want to max height, I guess, on this whole div as well. So we'll come up here, we'll do that too. Uh, I think we're starting to get there now. And then this one, what did we have? We had 100, and I think 100 worked out really well. And now we just want this to basically fill in that, fill in that area. Maybe back to 90. Maybe some more, I think, 80. And let's go with 85. Yeah. So now we just want this to come down uh, to the bottom there. And we might even be able to say full height there. Say full height. Since it's just going to fill up its parent div. No, it's, okay, so it's doing something funky there. Man, I hate CSS. Hopeless at this kind of thing. <laughs> Um, but we could say full height, but then give it a maximum height. And now we can just change this number until it works. So let's say 120, too much, or not enough. 40, can we go 45? No, no, we want to say maybe 35. All right. And there we go. Now we've got this really nice scrolling section there. Now let's go to the part where we actually click on this and it allows us to create um, a new a new category. In fact, we've already got a category, so let's start pulling in the categories before we do that. So I might come in here and do something quick and dirty for now. I'll say const um, is equal to use model collection. And we're going to import, import their Pomodoro category. And we want to pluck out of there the collection itself. So that's basically going to give us the categories. So I'll say here, um, categories. And then in that V4, we can say category in categories. And there we go. And now we can just come in here and say, for example, category dot title, just to check if that's working. What else have we got? Category.id for the key. And now we actually need to fetch it too. So if we come down here, what did I call it? Fetch, get, I don't know, something like that. Index, of course, that makes more sense. Index, and we'll call this index categories. So now I can just come down here, straight away index those categories. And there we go. It shows up and it works. Now, the next thing we can do is we can actually check if it's loading. So we can say indexing. And then I can very easily just come in here and add a spinner. So how about we say this all needs to be extracted. I'm going to extract this like crazy. Q dash spinner. And then you just say V dash if it is indexing. And then we can say size is equal to large. And I think that'll do it. Oh, color is equal to primary. I knew there was something else I want to add in there. And then we get that spinner showing up when we first come into the page um, before we get those categories. Cool.
All right, let's make it so that we can create a category now. So we'll come in here and we'll say const. We'll pull out. Mm, actually, we just need this to show that form, don't we? Because we put all that. Um, mm, we could probably do a better job at some point extracting all of this logic. So we probably don't want it to have knowledge. That we probably don't want the form to have knowledge of all of this. No, we almost certainly don't. All right, so I'm going to cut that. I'm going to come back out here. And let's just whack it in there. Let's take these imports and throw them at the top. And so I want this pairing component to have that knowledge. And then the form itself is only a form. And we'll say here, I want to use the, the special V model tool that makes it easy to proxy modeling. So I'm going to import to call view use i'll show you this in a second it's really cool so yarn add and i believe it's at view use slash core um i don't think i even need to look at the docs here that's pretty self-explanatory i will say const um props is equal to define props we'll define our props here we're going to have a title description color seconds title description color seconds title type of string and we'll say default is equal to just an empty string no this will be required All right, we'll do that for all of them. Title description, color, I'm gonna say title description, color, seconds. Description, color. And then another one called seconds. And I do realize I've done a little mistake here. I'll fix it up in a second. Uh, these should all be set to true. True. There we go. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, now I want to import. It's called use v model. Boom. And we also want emits for all of those. So let's come in here and say define. Or we'll say const emit is equal to define emits. And then we can basically say update and then the theme. So update title, description, color, seconds. Because these need to all be um, put in up front. So update and then the name of the thing. So they're all available. And I believe there's also a views the models. Yeah, the plural of that. So let's come down here. I've never actually used use the model, so let's see what that looks like. I'll see if I can figure out how to use it without the documentation. So props, that's obvious. Um, emit, that seems obvious as well. And okay, it looks like that's all it wants. So we can say here. Um, let me just, I, I am actually going to check the, the documentation just to make sure I've got that right. But I believe, yeah, that might actually be all I have to do. So get started. Where is it? Um, use the models, the plural. Let's take a look at that usage. Yeah, so let's just say props emit. Now the props have got a foo and bar. Okay, and it basically just pulls them out directly there. Okay, yeah, all right, that, that makes sense to me. So now I just have to pull out exactly what I want here. And specifically, I want, well, in this case, all of them. There we go. 
And this actually makes this API a bit nicer because we can get rid of the word form in all those scenarios. Uh, we don't want the error, we don't want this to be concerned with the error banner. Uh, so get rid of that. And I guess it might just re-implement it at some point. And we don't want it to be insert, uh, concerned with creating. So there we go. That's now done. Title description color second. Yeah. So it should be really easy to use that form now. We should be able to basically just proxy everything over to it. So, all right, let me just gather my thoughts here. What's wrong here? There we go. All right, so now we want to make it so that when you click on that button, let's close that, close that, and comment this out for the moment being. This is going to open a dialog. So we'll come in here and we'll say const create category dialog, um, maybe open to make it super descriptive. And we'll set that equal to false by default. And then I can come down here and at the bottom of the page, we'll have that dialog. So we'll say Q dash dialog. And that dialog, we could probably reuse it. So let's just say dialog. Um, show, how about show dialogue? That's very obvious to me then what it does. False by default, v dash model show dialogue, and then that button there is, is just going to open it. So um, q dash button, where did I put it? Here we go. At click is equal to show dialogue is equal to true. Now this is getting way too overwhelming. I definitely need to do some abstractions soon and then we'll just say content in there to check if it works and it does so now we can just wrap that inside of a cute card cute card section just add a bit of styling there and then we can say uh pomodoro ca uh, create pomodoro category form we can get rid of the word create because this can probably be used for both so let's say Pomodoro category form. Um, I'll re-import this Pomodoro category form. Oh, that didn't work. All right, work that time. All right, there we go. So we got the form now. And we basically just want to model all of that data. So remember um, up here, I was importing the form. So let's bring that back in and only bring in the form. We'll come back up here and we'll make sure that we've got use model because that's being used um, here. And now I can come down and start proxying all of this in. We've got title, description, color, seconds. Ah, title, description, color, seconds. Whack them all in. V dash model thing is equal to, and then form dot the thing. <laughs> and there we go. We've got the form showing up. Now, I'm gonna streamline this into a, into a component at some point. Oh, hello from Paris. <gasps> I love Paris. You know, when I went to Paris, that's the most I've ever walked in my life. Um, I recorded the steps and it was something insane because we just wanted to see everything. There was so much to see in Paris. It was amazing. Um, and then we went to a place called, I believe, St. Anthony Noble Val is what it's called. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly wrong. And the reason we went there was because um, there was a movie called The 100 Foot Journey, and it's about this Indian family that comes to France and opens up an Indian restaurant. And I remember seeing some of the scenery in that movie and thinking, my goodness, what a beautiful place. So I looked up where it was filmed, and it was even more beautiful in real life. The most gorgeous place on earth, St. Anthony Noble Vale. We stayed in a gorgeous um, Airbnb there. 
um, with my girlfriend, and it was yeah, it was, it was an amazing time. I love France. It's so green. It's just so beautiful and green. Uh, so definitely plan on going back there, especially when I'm um, in America. I think it's easy to get to France. It's hard to get everywhere when you're in Australia. <laughs> okay, so we've now got this form. We want to have a create button. So we'll come down here and we'll just whack it straight in there. And we'll make this unelevated. We'll set the color equal to primary. We'll say loading is equal to creating. We'll say at click, I want you to create the thing. And I think that will do. So let's make sure we've got creating and create. We'll pluck them out of here. Create, creating. Um, error, we'll deal with that in a second. Make sure I've got the comma in there. Uh, so let's see if this works now. Another category, blah, 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 da, 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 da. create. And it worked, but of course, I didn't actually um, close the dialogue when that was done. This is really easy to do, though. You can even do it inline. I won't, though, because that's probably a bad practice. Let's just say um, on create clicked. Uh, yeah, we'll literally just call that function. We'll come up here. And then we can say function on create clicked. And then we simply say this will be async. And we just say create. And then if, now we can actually use this error part here. Um, not error.value. So we don't have any errors. Then I want you to close the dialog. Show dialog.value is equal to false. And I reckon that'll do it. Great work, man. Your videos are very helpful. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you to say. Um, man, entering this dummy data can be a bit of a... You know what? You're doing stuff over and over again. This is something I keep telling myself. Streamline it. So let's come down here to the form. And we'll just say form.value... Uh, we'll go through them. Dot title is equal to um, blah, title, description, just so this becomes easy to play with. Um, color, hashtag 2020. And then seconds is equal to just some random number. Let's see if that works. There we go. So it's all just there by default. Uh, I want to fix that create button. Let's come down here and say uh, label is equal to create. We want it to be full width. There we go. Some people like to have icons on their create buttons. I actually hate it. I feel like it's really obvious what a create button does. I think with buttons, you either have an icon or the word. Um, I don't like to use both. In fact, I should start looking in the real world and see what people do in the real world. Um, yeah, but I personally don't like... Um, I personally don't like having both. This feels too cluttered to me. All right, so make that full width. This form is starting to look good. Let's maybe give it a... One thing I do with dialogues, right? This is a really cool piece of advice, I think. Is I say class is equal to full width like this and then I think okay what is the optimal width for this form and I set that as the max width okay so the optimal width for, to me is probably out to about there so I'll say and then I'll go style max width is equal to let's try 450 pixels mm, that's a little bit wide to me And that's starting to look good to me. Now, the cool thing about doing it this way and saying, give it a full width, but then set a max width, it means that it's going to shrink correctly on smaller devices. I don't know if that's actually small enough. Let me give you a better example. Let's just say the optimal um, viewing width was 600. So I'm like, okay, 600, to me, that's going to look good if it's at 600. Now, when I go smaller than that, it's automatically going to resize, see? 
So d d doing like dialogue sizes is always an absolute nightmare trying to figure it out. If you know this trick, you just remember full width and then set the max width to the optimal viewing width. Do you know what I mean by that? When I say optimal, I mean like um, if it was like make it as wide as it can be for it to still look good. And then you don't have to deal with like extra large, large different screen sizes or anything like that. This is all I do for my dialogues, and it always looks great in my opinion. So let's set that back to 400. Honestly, I reckon even thinner than that. Maybe like 360. Looks good to me. Yeah, let's leave it at that. All right, so this is, this is all working correctly. We can now create categories. Oh, that's not right, is it? So we probably want to say like, is it justify start or something? I don't know, let's get these mixed up. Item start. Ha! Got it in one. Except now it's kind of messed with it. Um a layout here. Why is that happening? What if I go to item start and I say full height. Nah, I'll be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing here when it comes to flex stuff. Okay, not no idea. I've got some idea, but definitely not a good enough idea. Uh, but this is when... Oh, no, I'm doing that on the page. I should not be doing that on the page. Okay, that's wrong. I, I, I chose the wrong place to do this at. What I meant to say was item start in the other row. Yeah, here. Start. Hmm. Justify. Start. I'm sure it's item start. Oh, maybe I'll come down to here and I tell them to go cell start. If anybody knows how to do this, just um, let me know because I'm obviously cl clueless in this area. Pretty sure there's nothing in there. Yeah, there's nothing in between there. This is just um, it's just basically stretching out to take up all the space. But I want to say don't stretch to take up all the space. Which I thought is what item start did. All right, well, let's try this. Let's try self start there. Items, I already tried that, didn't I? Or maybe it's a line start. All right, let's just go to the docs. I'm pretty sure they've got um, some good sections on this. Getting start, no, it would be under style and, oh no, layout and grid. <laughs> So this is a grid row. Mm, maybe you can't actually do this unless you're using columns. I mean, alternatively, maybe I could just wrap this entire thing inside of a div that grows. Yeah, that probably makes more sense. What if I just wrap that in a div that grows? Um, oh God, I'm getting lost in the spaghetti of my code now. This is why you've got to abstract early people. And also, I should be taking more breaks. We've been at this for like an hour and a half now. So, this part in particular, I want to... Wrap inside of a div. Class is equal to full width. Hmm. Okay, but then you don't. Okay, so I've wrapped it in the wrong place. We want to wrap this section inside of a div. This part here. 
Well, I'm not going to take the time to fully understand all this type of stuff. Width system. Uh, now, this one is going to be the one that's full width, and it's got the full height, but not this. There we go. Haha, -ha, it worked. Now, I'm guessing I probably also want to set the max height on there as well. Yeah. All right, anyway, we'll notice that there's a problem later on as we start adding more. So this is looking good to me. We've got uh, the title. Uh, what else did we have? We had like an edit and a delete button. So let's go ahead and do that. That should be pretty straightforward to do. And this is the cool thing. Once you've got use model, once you've got this use model here, it's really easy to start basically adding in like all the functionality that you need. Now, I'm going to have to turn these cards into their own components so I can give them their own use models so they can delete themselves and do all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go source, components, we'll create a new file in here. And this is a card, we'll call it a category card. I'm going to get start not using the word Pomodoro because it's a bit redundant at this point, I believe. So we put a template in there, and let's just see if we can extract all of that card logic. This is going to make this a lot more pleasant to work with as well. So here it is here. That's the card inside of there. Um, and so what did we call it again? We called it category card. Category card. Close that off, and we'll pass through the category. And there it is there, there it is there. So now if we jump into that category card, we should be able to just basically paste in that card. And we'll say, define props here. So we get those props through and we'll say, give me the category. The type of that will be a category. Oh, the model category, where is it? Pomodoro category, of course. And it is required. So now it's unhappy about some. Oh no, that's working. So now we've successfully proxied that through. Another thing I do now is I um I want to basically keep this category. Okay, I got ahead of myself. Started talking before I was ready. <laughs> Next, we're going to use use model like this so that we can basically start manipulating this category. And remember, this is coming from at view model slash super base. And we're going to pass through there Pomodoro category. And now we can basically just pluck out functionality. As I was showing before, you've got the form there. You can basically easily remove it. Um, you can update it. You can see if it's updating, all of that kind of good stuff. All right. So we can say here, for example, um, delete or remove is, I believe, what I called it. So I didn't end up with clashing um, whether or not it's removing. So we can start with the delete button. And I'll just make it super simple to begin with. Q dash button icon is equal to, uh, what would that be? Trash, maybe. We'll try it in a second. Um, when you click on it, And I'm about to show you something really cool, so stay tuned. This is awesome. Loading is equal to whether or not it's currently removing. And there we go. So now I'm just going to find the icon here. Oh, of course, it's MDI. MDI dash trash. Is that it? No. Delete. There we go. And I'll just quickly do some styling. Um, flat round and let's set the size equal to small yeah okay i think that looks good and i'll quickly say that this is um relative uh position and now i believe here i can just say class is equal to absolute bottom right mm. Okay, so 
you know what? That doesn't matter enough right now. Uh, so it says a Q dash margin right, uh, small, Q dash margin bottom, also small. And we'll figure that out in a second. Nah, sorry, this is, um, this is annoying me too much. Relative position, maybe it's position relative. I think it is. No, I'm sure it's relative position. Oh, okay, but um, this is inside of a cue card section, which might also have a relative position. So let's take it out of there and see if that does it. There we go. So now we get that delete in the bottom right there. Um, we've got the loading bar. Uh, it gets removed. The only thing we need now is the ID. So in order for it to know what category to delete, we need to also tell it what the ID is. So what we can do is we can use um, sync ref, I believe what it's, that's what it's called, which is a view use thing. All right, and basically this allows us to say, hey, I want you to take the category, um, oh no, I can't use sync ref in this case because I haven't got the category ID, but the entire category. Uh, I'm talking to myself out loud here. So we're going to import watch effect and that's going to come from view. And then basically we want to keep the ID of this category in sync with the ID that's passed through there. So then we say watch effect. I want you to take this ID and set its value equal to, say props here, props.category.id to make sure that they're in sync. And now when we click on that remove button, it knows the ID of the thing that it needs to remove. So let's see if this actually works though. And it works. How cool is that? And all of this like functionality is now available to us. So check this out. This is insane. Um, instead of category.title, we can pull form out of here. And now we can say form.title. Now you might be wondering, why is that working? If you've got a form, why does it, like how does it know what the text is for that form? And the reason is, what it does is it, this form is automatically going to set itself based on the model it gets with the ID. So when we, look, look at this, if I get rid of this here, um, now what? I made my limits are too strict. Too strict for a video. Yeah, notice that nothing shows up there if we're not syncing the ID, right? But if we give it an ID, it basically goes, oh, I've already got a model that I'm dealing with, so I'm going to populate the form for you with the data that has the model of that ID. How cool is that? Now, that means that we can do this. Check this out. Q-input, v-model is equal to form dot um, I believe we call it a title. So now this is an import. And then all we have to do is say, hey, when you blur that import, update. We pull update out of here. And update is automatically going to update using the values inside of this form here. So you don't have to say update and pass it a form or anything like that. You just use a form that was already created for you, right? It already does it for you behind the scenes. And you just call update. Check this out. Another category, blah. And now let's refresh the page. And it's still, it is updated. How cool is that? And now we can start styling this a bit nicer. So we can say dense. We can say borderless to get rid of that border there. And now this just, this is just one of those things, you know, in applications, how um, you see something and you're like, oh, I wish I could, you know, can I just click on that and update it? Well, in this case, the answer is yes, you can. You just do that and that's updated. Refresh the page and there we go. Now you probably want some feedback there. So you just say loading is equal to updating. And then you just pull updating out of here. And there we go. Now we get this really nice spinner as well. And now let's go ahead and add an update form. That's going to be surprisingly simple to do. And the way I like to do this actually is a little bit different. Um, rather than having a dialogue in every single one of these components, that's actually can create a little bit of overhead. So the way I like to do it 
is by emitting when you are having a button here and basically emitting an event that says, hey, I want to update this now. I'll show you what I mean by that. This is too much talk and not enough showing. Now, uh, let's make this bottom left. So throw on that side. And then this is going to be equal to pencil. And there we go. And at clicking is going to at click is going to emit an event. So we'll do that in a second. And emit. And then we'll say update um, clicked. Or maybe yeah, what, what do we say? Yeah, update clicked. Update button clicked. Let's make it a bit clearer. All right, so now we have to define that event by saying, well, we'll probably do that after the props. Define um, emit. And do you remember what I called that? I called it, yeah, you can sit tell I'm getting tired now. Update button clicked. And we'll say const emit is equal to that. So we're telling it that there's an update button clicked event and then here we're actually doing it. Oh, we might even actually instead of update button, how about this? How about um just update? Yeah, because it's pretty obvious. I'm just trying to imagine the API here at update. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. And we're going to pass through the ID as well. So category dot ID. There we go. And now on the parent component, we can basically just open. A form here. In fact, I think we can just use the same form. And by setting that ID, it's automatically going to pre fill the form. I'll show you what I mean by that. At update, and I might just do this inline. And now we can say, we will basically, we want to pull the ID out here. Well, let's get rid of all that. Commodore category will pull the ID out as well, which will be nothing by default. But when you click on update, it sets, which by the way gives you the um, category ID, it sets the ID to that category ID. Let's see if that works. Um, but then we also want to open the form. Where is it? Show dialogue is equal to true. Wow, how cool is that? But we want to make it so that clicking on create is going to basically clear that ID, um, therefore resetting the form. So let's go to the part where it calls create. Uh, on create click, there it is there. Oh no, wrong one. We want to do the one that opens the dialogue. Uh, here we go. So we're not just saying show dialogue true. I'm just going to do this in line for now. We also want to say category ID dot, uh, is equal to null. And essentially what we're doing here, let me, let me just quickly run through what we're doing. Uh, so when you click on this button, you show the dialogue. And by making sure the category ID is equal to null, so if I come up here, um, use model, or remember we set that to category ID. By ensuring that that is null, um, it, it essentially clears out the form. So behind the scenes, it goes, oh, I don't have a category ID anymore. I'm going to um, clear the form. So this means using this one composable, we can create, um, we can update, we can delete, we can do all that kind of stuff really, really easily. So let's just save this. And, okay, that's not working anymore. What have I done wrong? Category ID is equal to null. When I click on that, the ID is equal to the category ID. Maybe I just needed a refresh. We've got anything in the console here. 
Yeah, okay, so I've done something wrong here. Hmm. So maybe the data on the back end is not giving me the correct data. It's giving me nulls and it doesn't like that. Let's go to category. What are we category? No, we pretty much just made them nullable. Hmm. Just a little bit of debugging here. Um Let's just say schoolwork, do it. Let's go ahead and create that. Hmm, okay, so it doesn't look like that is actually resetting the form. Maybe I need to call reset form. This is probably something that I should, um, a feature that I should add to Superbase to this Superbase Composable. It looks like everything I just told you isn't actually happening. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish up soon. It's starting to hurt my ears. These headphones. Is it being set there? Yeah, why is it saying that its value is never read? ID is equal to category ID, yeah. Set it to null. Ah, oh, category ID is equal to the ID we get out of there. There you go, I accidentally got my logic switched around there. Okay, that's working now. The last thing we need to do is basically tell it that it's in update mode. So maybe I'll just say, updating is equal to true let's oh no you know what we don't even need to do that we just need to check if we have a category id so check this out we can now just say q dash button i'll say here v dash if category id is equal to well basically if we don't have a category id we want to do a create otherwise we want to do an update Let's do this and we'll say on update, clicked. We'll say if we do have a category ID. Um, change that to updating. Let's go back to our use model now. Oh man, next time I do this, I'm going to extract from the beginning. I think I get pressure doing live streams and so I don't extract my code from the beginning, which is not a good, it's not a good practice for myself and it also just shows um, I don't want to encourage other people to do lazy coding as well. So I need to remember that for next time. Just start extracting your code as soon as it starts getting um, a little bit unwieldy. So anyway, we've also got update now, updating. And now it's hard to explain these concepts to all of you because, you know, I'm doing all, so much in one file, which just gets a little bit overwhelming. All right, so let's create another async function for update on... Update clicked. We simply call update. And same thing, if there's any errors, if there's no errors, then um, show dialog is equal to false. Let's see if that works. Another category changed. There we go. Let's refresh the page. And it worked. How cool is that? Well, at least I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it's like this API to me is just beautiful. I love that I can just say, hey, use this Pomodoro category model. Um, and now we just pluck out all the functionality that we need. And that handles the front end state. And it also handles marrying that to the back end. So, you know, creating, updating stuff on the back end, doing all of that, and then updating it um, on the front end as well. So now we can create stuff. Let's just do one more, maybe. Um, nap break. Description, take a nap, you earned it. And then make it a nice blue sort of napping color. Seconds, and once again, I obviously need to um, have something here to make it easier to put in seconds. 
create that, and then we can delete them. Nap break, maybe I just want to make it 700 second update. And now if I click on here, it should give me a blank form. Yeah, and it clears out the form for me because the ID is being set to nothing. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this one. Next thing I'm going to do, which I'll hopefully get on tomorrow, if I've um, got the time, is make it so that you can basically drag these over onto this area here and then make it so that you can actually play um, that category. So if you can imagine, there might be like these little, you could have one that is um, schoolwork, for example. You might drag four schoolworks on there and then you click on schoolwork and then you play it and then you do your work and then you might make a little sound when it's done and then it kind of it'll show you a progress so i'm imagining like a css kind of color fill thing that fills it in um to let you know how much of the progress is done but yeah that's it i hope that you all enjoyed this stream i certainly had fun it was nice to build something again i haven't been able to build stuff in a while because i've been um working on these packages basically that makes it easier to build stuff and it kind of sucks when you spend all your time working on the packages and not actually building anything with them so it's kind of cool to do this today so we'll work more on it tomorrow and thanks so much for watching. All right, bye for now.